Welcome everybody to Innovative Traders Club. This is uh, our first webinar and we're really happy to introduce today uh, Matt Jackson. Matt's the General Manager of Creditor Watch. Welcome, Matt. Morning, how are you doing? Wonderful. So Credit Watch, Australia's largest credit bureau. Uh, you have over 50,000 customers uh, currently in your base. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So today we're gonna, uh, Matt's going to talk about uh, Credit Watch and in particular small business review. So Matt, I'm going to hand it over to you. Just let me click on this button here and make you host. So you should be good to go, Matt. Right, thank you. Yep. Um, so just by way of introduction this morning, um, I work at a, a credit reporting agency called Creditor Watch. Um, as we mentioned in the intro, we have over 50,000 customers that all access and contribute information to our bureau. Um, and a credit bureau is essentially a place that allows you to get information on any business in Australia. And people do that for two main reasons. Um, one is if you have any debtors or anyone that you have on credit, um, you can obviously do a business uh, credit check to make sure that they're gonna pay their, their bills after you've done the service or delivered your goods. Um, and on the flip side, uh, people also like to um, monitor and credit check their suppliers. So people who might be providing um, goods or services, um, or if you're a subcontractor and you like to ensure that you're gonna get paid at the end of the day, um, credit reporting and credit watch can really help you um, identify that. Just some highlights of our bureau. Um, we've got over 500,000 adverse cross directorships, um, which is a really important risk indicator. Um, we have 11 million credit reports sold since launch in 2010. We have a credit report and a credit profile on every ABN and ACN in Australia. Um, and we monitor over 13 million credit files for our customers. So our data is um, very comprehensive um, and you will find that we have information from sole traders right up to ASX listed entities. So we're gonna talk about the small business risk review first this morning um, and Creditor Watch's small business risk review is a, um, a monthly uh, set of statistics that we release and it's all around the health of the Australian business economy. So it typically looks at risk ind indicators such as court actions, uh, insolvencies, payment defaults. Um, it also looks and allows us to break these stats down into industry specific buckets and track um, how industries are performing over time. Um, we get this information from a number of sources, including ASIC, um, the AFSA Insolvency Notices Register, um, the Australian Business Registry, and then also from some proprietary data sources, which would be our credit watch payment defaults and also uh, credit inquiries with, which come through our bureau um, and through our 50,000 customers. So this used to be a quarterly release, but during COVID we've moved it to a monthly release to really help people understand where business is at in the economy. Um, and we've seen some very interesting and unique trends during um, COVID, basically since, since Feb. And it's not always what you expect, but when you think through it, it it's, it's, um, it's definitely it makes sense and, and interesting. So we're just gonna dive into a couple of those and where we're sitting at the moment. So firstly, if we look at um, adverse information, the major risk indicators um, that, that we like to assess is, is payment defaults, court actions, um, payment trends and administrations. And all of them have had a negative impact or had a decrease uh, since COVID has hit, except for payment terms. And I'll get back to that a little bit later. Um, firstly on payment defaults, we've seen a significant decrease in payment defaults, which is probably a little counterintuitive to what you would expect. Um, but the main reason for that is the Aussies are a sympathetic bunch. Um, we band together when times are tough and we really have seen businesses do the same over the COVID period. Um, and by that, there hasn't been as many payment defaults being recorded um, on a monthly basis. We have, however, over the last month, seen the first increase in payment defaults since COVID started. So there was a big drop off in Feb, uh, March, April, and now we're starting to see those payment defaults come back into play. And the reason that is, is 
people are trying to get back to normal. They want business to be, um, yeah, running at a normal level. And they've obviously carried bad debts, some of them for six months, and they're kind of saying enough is enough. So I think we'll continue to see this trend over the coming months, even into Christmas, where payment defaults are back on the rise. Um, other important thing to note though, is they are 37.5% down on this time last year. So overall, they're still down year on year, but it's a monthly increase that we're uh, watching at the moment. Looking at external administrations, there's been a lot in the media around external administrations and the talk of zombie businesses. So um, external administrations are, are at a, a record lows. Even during reporting season, uh, usually June, July, there's a, a, usually a big increase in administrations and it was nowhere near um, the levels that had previously happened in previous years. The reason there's a significantly reduced number of administrations um, is essentially due to the government subsidies that are being um, put forward by the federal government at the moment. They're really keeping businesses afloat. And also the natural attrition of businesses that would go into administration haven't because they've been able to access JobKeeper on um, if they have a, an active ABN or an ACN. So there is some concern that once government stimulus is released or reduced, that we'll see, that, see a big wave of administrations come through. Government stimulus has obviously been extended um, until December and some of it till March. So I'm expecting early to mid next year that there will be a significant increase or a jump in insolvencies um, over that time. There has also been some new legislation put forward to um, help fast track uh, small business insolvencies. So those with um, liabilities less than a million dollars. And I think that will help, but it also mean that there's a significant more, uh, more administrations in that March, April period next year. So year on year, administrations have fallen a massive 47.5%. It's a staggering number. Um, and there will have to be a stage where those um, naturally failing businesses will, will go into administration. Looking at court actions, they're obviously another great indicator. The government changed the regulations around um, the thresholds for court actions. So um, there was a change that the minimum amount had to be over $10,000. Um, and there was basically a period of six months grace given to all debtors. So we've seen court actions drop significantly. However, they are starting to rise again um, in line with our payment defaults. And I think that will increase over the next three months because that six month grace period is, is coming to an end for most businesses. What, we're, what it will also mean is the court actions coming through are for a more significant dollar value. So where there used to be court actions for two or three grand, um, they're gonna, in my um, opinion, be for 10, 20, $30,000 because they've, businesses have supported people for the last six months and the debt has increased. So it's not all doom and gloom out there. Um, there are some positives um, that I can talk to you about today. And I think one of the um, really positive things is that credit inquiries is on the increase um, month on month. So that means people are trying to get back to business. People are lending credit once again, where they might've been focused on COD previously. And I think that is really um, going to help stimulate the business economy and trying to get people back, um, back to normal. Uh, we're also seeing some really positive trends in um, payment terms, which comes from Credit Watch's integration with Xero and MYOB. And 11 out of the 19 industries saw an improvement in payment days over the last period. So this is really exciting. It means that people are starting to pay their bills um, in 11 out of those 19 industries. Um, some of the best performing industries, mining, um, media and telecommunications and agriculture, forestry and fishing. So some core services there. Mining has uh, predominantly remained un unaffected during this time. Um, media and telecommunications, obviously there's a lot of buzz around all of the 
Um, people are looking to try and get more informed during this time. And with agriculture, forestry and fishing, we like to bunch them with its essential services. So people need food, um, they need toilet paper, as we've sort of seen during the <laughs> pandemic. And that's obviously positively affecting these, uh, these industries. Looking at the most impacted industries, um, transport, post and warehousing. That is a, a segment that you would first think that it would be thriving. So um, for example, AusPost would be a big winner out of the pandemic, people getting things delivered to home. However, with the shutdown of a, a number of businesses, um, there's less goods going from business to business, which has really hurt the industry. Um, and also this industry is made up a lot of, are made up of a lot of subcontractors. So you might have a courier company, but each driver runs their own passion as a subcontractor and payment terms are starting to um, deteriorate as a result of that. Um, administrative um, and support services has had a, a decrease. Uh, I think a number of businesses have cut back on nice to haves. That includes service offices, um, outsourced, um, receptionists, et cetera, which a lot of uh, traders use. And then financially, financial insurance services. So people, people are seeking less advice and trying to do some things themselves. Um, one thing I will note in that industry though, however, is we've seen an increase in the number of new business registrations. So a lot of people have been either let off their job or decided to use this time to start something new. They might have also had a, a previous um, professional career and decided to get back into a trade, which is something that they did um, earlier, or it's what they decided they want to do during this time to uh, support their families. So I think that the financial insurance services industries will definitely bounce back. Uh, just looking at Creditor Watch um, as a business and what we, what we do, um, we have four main pillars that uh, customers use our products for. Uh, firstly, we have a product called Apply Easy, which allows you to acquire new customers in a faster and automated manner. Uh, we then have a Creditor Watch monitoring and reporting, and that's what we're going to be doing a demonstration of today. And that look allows you to do an upfront credit check to make sure someone's going to pay their bills. But most importantly, uh, it also allows you to monitor those customers for change. So if something happens with one of those customers, you can basically be sent an alert and it will point your attention in the right direction. We then have um, a tool that allows you to analyze your customers and tell you who your best and your worst customers are and how they're paying you versus the market. And finally, we've got a solution around PBSR, which is all about ensuring that you get paid um, if you deliver goods to a, a, a work site and that business goes into administration. Um, so this is the first part of a three-part Credit Watch series with Innovative Traders Club. Um, we're going to focus on our core product today, which is um, Credit Watch monitoring and um, alerts. So I'm just going to swap over to um, Credit Watch website now. Um, and Credit Watch is a really easy to use service um, on a flat monthly subscription that allows you to credit check all of your new customers and also um, monitor your, any of your existing customers or any works that you might be having on or projects you're working with. And it does, as I said, two main things. The first thing is it allows you to monitor your customers. And the way that we do that is we grab all the ABNs that you might be dealing with, whether it's two, five, 50, 100 or 10,000, um, this system is scalable to allow you to, to do that. Um, and we put them in something called a customer list. So that would be all the ABNs that you're essentially looking after. Um, on a daily basis, you will receive an alert if there's any change with one of your customers. So these are important changes you really need to take notice of. So things like uh, court actions, administrations, if there's any payment defaults, if a director changes in a business and you didn't know about it, Creditor Watch will basically send you a, an email and let you know about it the day that it happens. So some practical ways I can um, tell you some of my customers use this would be um, if a large court action or a court action comes in against one of your customers, it's worth checking out how much it is and whether you have an outstanding amount of that or adversely if that entity supplies you 
making sure that they're going to be able to pay you at the end of the week. Um, some other things like administrations, you want to stop dealing with that entity straight away um, and register your interest with a creditor. There's also some uh, more nuanced things that I like to look for. So a director change is an important one, especially if a number of directors are leaving a business in a short period of time. It's either being bought out by another entity or we often find um, in construction that uh, people might be leaving a business uh, because there's some trouble coming. So it's a good way to ensure that they don't carry that um, blemish or black mark on their uh, credit record moving forward. Uh, some other things to look for, cross directorships, a director who's had a previous court action is five times more likely to have another one. So it starts to paint a bit of a picture um, of the person and the entity that you're dealing with. Now, I like to say that credit monitoring is like a guardian angel. It's uh, impossible to know all of your customers intimately. And even if you think you've got a great relationship and a handshake um, agreement, very rarely is someone gonna ring you up and let you know that they've just been taken to court by someone else or they're struggling to pay their bills. Um, it's typically where we find people with the best relationships are the ones that are hit the hardest when, um, when, when their businesses start to, start to fail. So that's the first part and that's credit monitoring. And I, I, I uh, really think that's probably the, the most important part of credit reporting and due diligence. Um, but the other part is a credit check. So that allows you to essentially do a snapshot in time and tell you whether you want to do business with someone. And Credit Watch has a credit record of every ABN and ACN in Australia. So you can search by ABN, ACN or a business name. So I'm going to pick up a particular, particularly bad example today. And the reason I'm going to do that is just to show you all the type of adverse or negative information that we can have on a credit file. The good thing is that most businesses in, in Australia do the right thing. Most of them won't have adverse information. And I think sometimes when people look at a credit record, they're sometimes disappointed if there's nothing negative on there. But I think when you do see the adverse information, it's a real um, shock and it's something that you want to um, investigate a little bit more. So on a credit report, we're on a live credit report now, um, and we go to ASIC, the ABR, um, all of our proprietary data and pull this information live every time someone accesses it. Up the top here, we have widgets, which is designed to draw your eye to important information straight away. And within 30 seconds, you should really be able to decide whether you want to do business with someone. Slightly below that is a giant red risk box. So that acts as a stop sign. And if there is anything important you need to look for, um, this will highlight it here for you. So as you can see, this particular entity has significant, significant amount of um, adverse information. So it's something I'd want to spend some time looking at. If the report is clean and there's no adverse, um, it's more about validating, checking the information. So up the top is summary information. So this is all around um, the ABN or the ACN. Is the entity registered? How long they've been trading for? And if you're gathering a credit application, you should make sure that the name and the ABN match exactly to what is on a Creditor Watch record um, because that's coming directly from ASIC and the Australian Business Registry. Don't forget that credit application is a contract and you've got to basically cross your um, T's and dot your I's. Creditor Watch also has a credit score, which allows you to really visually determine whether you want to do business with someone. Um, our scores between zero and 850. And we also plot the average for the entity type that you're dealing with. So my recommendation is that you're dealing with people at or above the average. Um, you can see this one is significantly lower. So it would be someone you want to move onto a COD account or determine whether you actually want to do business with them. The other really important part about the score is the payment trend, or sorry, the, the trend over time. So it looks at over the last 12 months, how's the score been trending? And you wanna be dealing with entities that are getting either better or have remained very stable at a high level for a number of months. You can see this one is quite jumpy and it's kind of gone down and up, but still well below the average the entire time. 
over the last 12 months. Credit inquiries, so how many businesses have looked up this credit profile? It's a good indicator to tell you how um, credit active the entity is. If it's a small business and there's a high number of inquiries, they've either just picked up a, a new job and they need some new um, suppliers, or they potentially could be supplier hopping um, and they're moving from supplier to supplier because they have some outstanding amounts. Looking at adverse information, so that's that negative information, you can see court actions. We'll detail um, when the court action was, who the plaintiff is, and the total dollar amount outstanding. Um, court actions are a really good indicator of risk. Payment defaults. Payment defaults come from our 50,000 members, and this is Creditor Watch's earliest warning sign that someone's having cash flow problems. We typically see a default appear um, six to nine months prior to the first court action. And the reason uh, for that is often it's smaller creditors that are getting, uh, that are being unpaid first and they jump in and they uh, register a default on Creditor Watch. So as you can see, there were two court actions, but six defaults and they were much earlier in the piece. So these um, payment defaults, even if it's for a couple of hundred dollars, are by far the best indicator that someone's having cash flow problems. A really staggering stat around these is um, that over 50% of customers that have a payment default go into administration within 18 months. So as you can tell, they're extremely predictive. As a member as well, you can also register a payment default. So if you have a customer that isn't paying you, um, you it's well beyond terms and you've obviously gone through uh, some sort of collection process. You can also register a default. You can send a demand letter with credit, the Creditor Watch logo and it really does get results. It's a great step before sending a debt to a debt collector. Um, we obviously don't take a percentage of the debt if successfully paid off our demand and um, default. So it's a really good um, cost effective way to chase up bad debts. It's amazing how just a third party logo has an impact on people's really desire to pay a bill. We find that when Creditor Watch logo is in, on an invoice, it magically finds its way to the top of the pile pretty quickly. Uh, insolvency notices. So if a business goes into administration, you can see um, the full details of that. It's really important if you get an insolvency notice and you have monies outstanding to get in contact with the administrator. And don't wait two or three weeks for that letter to arrive in the mail. With Creditor Watch, you're alerted to that the day that it actually goes into administration. Mercantile inquiries come from um, over 200 debt collectors that use Creditor Watch. And for you, it's an early warning sign that a debt collector is about to sue this entity. So it's a great opportunity for you to ramp up your collection process and try and get some money before the, the business goes into administration. A really good indicator of whether you want to be doing business with someone is looking at the directors. So is the director um, an upstanding director or if they had some blips along the way that you might want to be aware of. So you can see um, this particular director gives their date of birth and their residential address. But most importantly is the cross directorship information. So these are bit, um, entities that the director um, is on the office, office holding on. So you can see um, this particular director has 40 businesses. Um, this is not uncommon in construction. Typically a new uh, business is created for each project, but what you want to really uh, dive into is the ones in red. So they're entities that have some type of adverse information associated with them. So you can see that one has a payment default, multiple have gone through the insolvency administration process. Um, so it might be something you want to kind of look into a little bit further. If you want to click through, all you do is click the link and it will take you to the, that business's credit report as well. And you can kind of dig a little bit deeper. Address information. So you can see where the business um, operates from with a little Google map view. Another important thing to look at is the shareholders, especially if there's multiple shareholders and uh, one of the shareholders 
is a company, you can actually chase it up a tree and find your ultimate, where your ultimate risk lies. So anyone with over a 25% shareholding can be what we call a UBO or an ultimate beneficial owner. And that's kind of the entity that you really want to be monitoring as well, because if something happens in one of the group of companies, it can often, often have a trickle on effect to the business you might be dealing with. Um, so my recommendation, especially if you're in construction, is monitor the group of companies, not just the entity that you're particularly dealing with or contracted to. Um, and finally, on a credit report, you can see the business names that are associated with an entity. So as you can see, it's extremely comprehensive, the information that you can look at on an entity. Um, it's extremely predictive, especially around the adverse information and credit watches payment information. And it really gives you a good indication of whether you want to be doing business with someone. The other thing I'll just show you really quickly today is credit watches debt collection tools. Now, although Creditor Watch isn't a debt collector, we do have the ability to help you collect outstanding amounts. And the way that we do that is by um, providing you some templates, some really easy to use templates that you can use in your collection process. That goes from first invoice, 30, 60, 90 day reminders, a final notice and a letter of demand. And the great thing about them is all you have to do is um, enter the dollar values associated with it and the customer number, and we generate those letters for you. You can then print it off, send it via email or post, and it has Creditor Watch's logo on it. My personal favorite is the letter of demand. And the important thing about that is it tells you the, um, the impact of being defaulted. So it essentially gives the debtor seven days to pay, if that doesn't occur, it says that a default will be registered on their credit profile and it explains the impact of that. Obviously, a lot of small businesses don't really know what a payment default is, so it's important to let them know that it has serious consequences for not for a non-payment of your invoice. And as, it, as I said before, it gets you to the top of the pile pretty quickly. Hey, Matt, that's, that is outstanding. Um... I'm not sure is there more that you needed to show this morning? No, that was it for this morning. Look, that is that is fantastic. And I've taken quite a few notes in that time. Um, I think we're a little bit just over half an hour. And for any tradies in business or uh, tradies thinking of moving into business, I think that could well be the most important 30 minutes that they could really invest in to, to really understand risk. I know traders are very good at identifying technical risk because typically that's what they do. They're very good traders and they know what they're doing and how they do it and are able to evaluate that risk. But I think what you've demonstrated this morning in that business part of business, this is probably sometimes the blind spot in all the excitement of growth or maybe taking opportunities or, or maybe getting a cold call for someone that says, look, we want you to come and do some work for us. Um, maybe that could also be an alarm bell call why isn't someone else doing it? And I think what you've shared here this morning uh, would really help them to, to make good decisions in, in a business sense of whether the excitement of trying to get that top line revenue will end up in a hell of a lot of pain <laughs> at the back end because they just don't get paid for, for or get the rewards for what they do. Um, you talked about um, uh, monthly release. So obviously COVID uh, and I suppose the potential risk uh, in this sort of really unusual time has so you're able to share that data uh, rather than quarterly, monthly. So I think that particularly as we move out of COVID is probably still going to be relevant to, to a lot of tradies. Uh, and you sort of said about trying to get back to normal. So obviously people have been covering a lot of those debts, uh, maybe or have been a little bit more patient in, in those payments. <clears throat> Excuse me. But as time, I suppose, changes, uh, they're under a lot of pressure because they have been carrying the debt and that could create some action. Um, naturally failing businesses. And that was really interesting. And again, I don't think a lot of traders would know that. I mean, I think if there is a naturally failing business, people aren't necessarily going to go out and let people know about it. They're just going to sort of slide into, into whatever that ends up. So for traders out there to take that on board, to understand that that's exactly the data you're sharing helps them to get in front of the game there to make better decisions proactively rather than the consequences of, of sort of living in hope, if you like, that maybe it'll be all right. Because I think you shared too, 50%, if this is right, 50% of companies that have defaulted, had a payment default, will go into liquidation within 18 months. 
That's yeah. scary, isn't it? That I mean, I wouldn't yeah. know the consequences of that one action. You think, well, just a blip, but in many cases, the stats will tell us that that's the start of the end. Yeah, that's right. It's a essentially a flip of a coin whether that business will be there in 18 months. So, yeah, um, yeah it's a, a staggering start. I think uh, the widgets, uh, one of the earlier dashboards that you showed us uh, in that sort of 30 second view, I think for traders, that's uh, just that one view will make a, a massive difference in their decision making uh, around um, credit and risk. And, and also the positive. I mean, if they see a lot of green stuff there, well, obviously they know that it's, uh, it's worth continuing and pursuing. And what I did like that, uh, the Creditor Watch logo, if you like, and I think uh, I'm not sure if you used the words, but it does pack a punch. The fact that it's uh, it's seen there, it might take you from the bottom of that payment pile to the top. So from an investment point of view, I mean, that's that's really no brainer, isn't it, for traders that are a particular operating environment where this inside is going to be sort of day-to-day -day of value to them. Yeah, yeah. All right, mate. Well, thank you. Um, we really appreciate your time this morning. I know we've got a couple of other sessions with tradies. So what we will do um, for those that missed it this morning, we'll put um, we'll put this on the website so they'll be able to get access to it. And maybe uh, if we can get, uh, Ash and I can get you, maybe we have a podcast as well, Tradie Avant Garde. And it'd be great to maybe get uh, get you on that show too and, and have a bit of a chat about the, the great things that Creditor Watch are doing and, and in your experience, particularly in that tradie space, some of the, the things that are going to be important for them in making good decisions on, um, particularly around credit in their business. Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. And just well, to today, I just really encourage everyone to jump on the website and give it a go. Usually this is the last thing you feel like doing after you get home after a hard day's work, but it just is so important. And when you start to use it, it's a really easy to use system. Um, yeah. So don't be scared off by the acronyms, the jargon, um, the systems designed to make it uh, foolproof. So jump on and give it a go. All right, we might post that on our website too, the link uh, to Creditor Watch and get on there. But uh, and, and traders notoriously, uh, they, they think it's a good idea, but sometimes they're busy doing other stuff. So I think I don't think there's any better lesson they could take away from business around uh, particularly profitability is making sure they're getting paid and work with people that, uh, that do pay. And I think that's the insight the Creditor Watch will, will give them. Awesome. Thanks so much for today. I appreciate it. All right, Matt. Thank you very much for your time. We'll speak to you soon. Cheers.